Right then, this is a quick road test video uh, for a Honda CRV 2 litre executive automatic. Registered KN54 PXA and with just 60,554 miles on the clock. The reason we do the road tests essentially is just so that you see the car advertised actually in operation. And th this, that way we can actually tell you of any issues on the vehicle before you come to us. It's the very point of doing the video. Uh, we're well aware that you know, many of our customers come from an awfully long way away to come and buy our cars. So the least we can do is go to the time and trouble to do this for you because we know how frustrating it is to go and see a car which you're told is good when it's got a fundamental fault you should have been told about. Given the service history of the car, obviously you'd expect this car to be good in the, in the way it drives and of course it doesn't disappoint in that sense. Um, this car is slightly different from most in the sense that this is actually my wife's car, um, not, not just a stock car. And so I know this car intimately. We've done many thousands of miles in it and we know it well and it's been absolutely brilliant but time for a change for us. Another CRV of course, that's all we ever have uh, apart from the odd Lexus now and again. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful car. Engine starts absolutely instantly, settles to completely smooth, even idle and pulls beautifully through the entire rev range of the car. It's incredibly flexible uh, and they're just bomb proof engines that, you know, by a country mile, the most reliable engine in its class, not just for reliability, but also for longevity. They're very long lasting. Uh, help the course, obviously they're cam chain driven, so no cam belt service is ever scheduled on these cars, um, but it's a jewel of an engine, it really is. There's no warning lights on the dashboard at all, and there never has been while we've owned the car. Um, and temperature gauge is running at a third, which is exactly where it should be on a Honda vehicle. Engine then feeds through into the automatic gearbox, which as you expect from Honda is lovely and slick in operation. Uh, that's not to say you shouldn't check out, um, as with all automatics, signs of any sort of clumpy gear changes, any sort of thuds into gear. Um, you know, do the check when the car's stationary, when it's in neutral, pop it into um, drive and then into reverse and then just see if there's any delays, any thuds as it goes in, because there shouldn't be. Uh, we, we never touch the gearboxes on these cars, they're absolutely solid as a rock, um, and this one changes gear just wonderfully, wonderfully smoothly, as it should. Steering of the car, which is a real strong point on this generation CRV, I love this, um, the steering of them, because it's proper hydraulic power steering, so you get a real weight to the steering, which is lovely. Um, you know, it's not a sports car, so it's not, you know, giving you tons of feedback, but it makes the car feel lovely and solid on the road. And I can't detect anywhere in the steering at all. It feels absolutely just, you know, just slack free. It also tracks absolutely bullet straight. Um, there's no vibrations at all coming back to the steering wheel of the vehicle. Uh, but a lovely setup, and it matches the chassis brilliantly. It, you know, too sharp a steering, and people will be jolted about. Too sloppy, and it just feels ponderous. And they've got this absolutely spot on, as they have the chassis itself, because the ride comfort I rate is one of the most comfortable um, of all Honda cars. Honda know this market wonderfully well. They're the the CRV is the best selling SUV in the world, and has been for quite some time. So they know their market absolutely brilliantly. And what they've achieved really is basically a really lovely balance between having a, you know, a, a very comfortable ride, but one which doesn't allow the car to kind of keel over through the corners or flopping around, which can actually be really uncomfortable and quite nauseating for passengers. Um, and my kids are particularly prone to car sickness and they never suffer from it in these cars. Um, it was, you know, some of the other stuff I've driven, they've um, had a troubled time in. But also on road test when I'm thinking of the chassis I'm also listing out for any kind of clonks or rattles from underneath the vehicle that may be there that shouldn't be there so you'll hear it hitting a bump but you shouldn't hear any sort of kind of secondary um, sort of chatterings going on and there's nothing on the car at all it's absolutely silent in that respect just checking the cruise control there all working exactly as it should as well just going to come to a sharp corner now and give the brakes a bit of a shove just been through an MOT so I know it's in good order but um, it's nice to do it. Brake pedal is nice and solid on the car. It brings the car down nice and straight and true. 
Um, it doesn't pull violently left or right. You know, obviously it'll follow the contour of the road very slightly because they're meant to. Um, but it doesn't just suddenly just dart off. Uh, but the pedal's nice and reassuring too. Coming to the interior, you know, for a car of its age and mileage, it, as I said in other videos, it's really hard to get across just how solid and well built these cars are. Um, you know, very few cars stand the test of time as well as a CRV. They're brilliantly, brilliantly put together. There's not a hint of a squeak or a rattle or a buzz from the interior trim at all. It's like driving a car that's a year old in that sense. It just feels rock solid. Um, and they're lovely places to sit and operate. Great driving position, brilliant visibility. You can see to the end of the bonnet, which you can't on so many modern cars. Um, and the dashboard is simplicity itself and is uh, you, obviously this is the later version that you effectively the 2005 model so you get the new style gauges on it then um, the audio uh, remote up here and the cruise is set up in a slightly different way as well um, now to the only issue on this car because we are absolutely as straight as die at the company in terms of kind of telling people what's what the sat nav on these cars i have to say is appalling um, it always has been pretty much from the outset, but it was very, very old, early sat-nav technology. Um, as you can see there, the map's operating. Don't be fooled by that. Every now and again, um, you drive along, it'll say disc error or something like that, which is uh, the normal thing on these. Basically, the radio CD works perfectly. I never use a sat-nav anyway. I use my phone. The problem with these sat-navs is they'll say DVD error, suggesting the disc is at fault it pretty much never is it sometimes is but more often than not is not it's normally actually the laser in the um, dvd drive um, you can get them repaired cost about 200 pounds which isn't actually that dear um, the problem is you then get it back a nicely repaired ancient sat nav system which is going to do the same again within a few years anyway but you'll also have 2005 roads on the car unless you buy a new dvd disc which is going to cost you about 150 quid from Honda, or you buy a scratched second-hand one, you know, so the option's yours. The long and short of it is, I don't use it. I've got my phone, which, you know, automatically updates maps, um, which is far, far better than using any of those things. Um, but, as I said, we are absolutely honest about it, so that's um, that, that issue, and that's the only issue on the car, by the way. Um, if you don't already know, of course, these are four-wheel drive cars, um, four drive on this car is very clever again Honda with the experience of what people want from the vehicle know that most of their drivers will be driving it as I am now on perfectly good clear roads in good condition so why bother having four wheel drive churning away using up fuel put mechanical wear on the car and obviously eating up your tyres and fuel this one is running in front wheel drive the most efficient way to pull a car along um, pretty much the whole time only as and when the front wheels start to spin and maybe a bit of snow or if you're towing a caravan or something like that or going to a gymkhana um, the front wheels spin automatically you don't press any buttons automatically brings in the rear wheels absolutely seamlessly and very efficiently by the way um, you get through the issue and it turns off a few seconds after it stopped the, the wheel stops spinning it's absolutely brilliant it really really is and um, we've you know we've had so many CVs I've almost lost count um, and never touched the system either absolutely bulletproof as I said at the start of the video the point of this video is to pick up on any 